was about 2003. I struggled with a hoarse voice and I was struggling to talk. When I saw the surgeon, he listened to my voice. He then um, put a camera up my nose and down my throat. The left vocal cord wasn't moving properly. He said he would just carry on keeping an eye on it. And that's what carried on for about three years. After about three years, he sent me for an ultrasound scan, which the counted nodules on the left-hand side of the thyroid gland. From there, it was just a case of carrying on, keeping an eye on things. They looked like perfectly harmless nodules. I was then referred to a professor of speech, and then she suggested that really the thyroid should be taken out. At first I had just the one half of the thyroid removed. Never even crossed my mind. Nobody suggested it. I put an idea in my head. Cancer had never been mentioned. I went on my own for my results. I went into the room and expected just to be told, oh yes, I'm pleased your voice is recovered and it's good. Um, and then I was told as I was sitting there that I had cancer. I looked at him and I can remember saying, but I can't have cancer. I just didn't know what to do. I had nobody to talk to when I came out of the consulting room. I went and sat in the car by myself and I just sobbed. Came back to the house, I was in on my own. I picked up the phone and I phoned in at work. And I just, just blurted out, um, Ian, I've got cancer. And he arrived home in minutes. We just held each other. Then we suddenly thought, oh gosh, I've got to get in touch with Caroline and Paul. My son and my daughter must know first before we say anything else. Um, so we got them up home. And of course, it just tore us all apart. It was really, yeah. I sat and talked about everything. We just held hands a lot. It helped me knowing that I had a daughter and a son and my husband that were just surrounding me, boosting me, giving me confidence every day really. So the next step was to go and get the other part of my thyroid gland taken out. Went back and got the results from that and we were really happy that that had came back all clear. It hadn't spread to the other side. After that, I was going to the Freeman Hospital to see the cancer care team and set me on the road for my first radioactive iodine treatment. It was good to walk in the room and meet someone who had already been in my position who had cancer and could help talk me through everything. Um, she became a great friend, um, a great help in all the way right through. The preparation for the radioactive iodine treatment was I had to stop taking my thyroxine tablets, which was just dreadful. It made me feel awful. I just wanted to sit and cry all the time. And then I started on a special diet, low iodine diet. Um, the diet wasn't too bad, but the fact that I didn't have my thyroxine to back me up um, was really hard going. Um, I went in for radioactive iodine treatment and I was in a room by myself. I was very, very lonely um, and I was very down, quite depressed. Um, people tried to cheer me up, brought me magazines and 
had to talk to my family as they came and just stood at the door. A week after I had my radioactive iodine treatment, I went back, had a full body scan, waited a couple of weeks. There was a, a round circle about the size of an orange, a large orange. Um, on my head, the way the hair just fell out and it was completely bald. Um, didn't know what it was, probably just the stress and the strain of being told you've got cancer. Went back to see my specialist at the cancer team and was actually told that my cancer had spread into little deposits around my body but also up into my skull, which was absolutely devastating. I can remember being given a cup of tea and actually I couldn't hold it, I was shaking so much. But the support was there, the help was there from the team right from that moment. The way the head was bold, that in the end was caused by the iodine treatment going to the skull where the tumours were and that had caused the hair to fall out. my daughter was going to have a baby. I was so excited for them and then I started to think oh, I don't know if I'll be here to see this baby. Oh, and it was just, I just had to be, I just had to hold that baby in my arms for the first time and it was lovely when she arrived, Anna, and I picked her up and I held her in my arms close to me five years ago since she was born and I'm still here looking after her and playing with her and running about the garden with her and having fun. It was a funny feeling that I felt the day I was taken into hospital to have the operation because I knew my family were holding back. You know, I was getting lots of cuddles and you know good looks and texts from friends and I just wanted to get into hospital to get it done. The way I felt was I just wanted to get it cut out. That thing shouldn't be there and I wanted to get rid of it. The surgeon went through what would happen. Part of the skull would be removed. Um, a piece of artificial skull would go back in its place. The tumour would come out. Um, and once I went to sleep, I wouldn't know anything else till I woke up again. So, of course, I was quite happy. I was just so desperate to get rid of this. After the operation, I waited a good few weeks before I went back to see the surgeon. And he was absolutely delighted the way things had gone. It had been a big success and he was thrilled to bits with it. Um, so much so that I didn't have to go back and see him. Um, so after that I went back to work and got on with my life. I was a nursery nurse that looked after children for about 15 years. It was a way of life and I loved it. I was excited to get back to think, wow, I've beaten this, I've done it, at long last. I went back to the cancer care team and it was put to me that the way forward would be um, possibly more radioactive iodine treatment carrying on in the future. My full body scans revealed that there were deposits throughout my body, in my spine, my shoulder, my lungs. Didn't have any symptoms. It was, just came as a complete surprise. The deposits in my body were just going to be treated with radioactive iodine treatment. That was the best way forward. Every time I had the radioactive iodine treatment, the uptake was great. I was having a good uptake from it but it just wasn't quite getting rid of it. 
I was taking the dog for a walk down, one day down the woods and I just felt as though she was pulling on my left arm, my left shoulder was really sore. I was getting some tremendous pains and I thought, oh, that just doesn't seem right. When I went back to the cancer clinic, I explained what was happening and he had another look at the x-rays and saw oh, the deposit there was quite angry. So he would arrange for me to have some radiotherapy treatment on my shoulder, which would help with the pain. Because I was back at work and obviously I was picking children up constantly, babies to cuddle them, nurture them, look after them. The arm started to give again um, and it was just literally putting pressure on it every day with the lifting. Um, so the time came that I was just in so much pain, I said I've just got to stop this, I've got to give up work, I can't do it anymore. And that was what I decided on, that's what happened. Went into my little room again, and that was fine. Come to the Monday where I was about to leave, my husband came to get me, and I said, you know, while I've been brushing my hair, I can feel this spongy bit on my scalp. Ian went and asked the nurse if she could come and go down and get Kate. Kate came up and said, oh yeah, I'm not happy with this. I'll get in touch with Dr. Malik, which he was here within the hour. Um, got that sorted. And that was it until I went a week later for my full body scan and saw that the skull had actually come apart. It was wrenching. It was really... I was just destroyed by it. I just thought, oh, I just thought all that was gone and, you know, things were improving, if anything. But then, no, I thought, right, done it before, we can do all this again. Then I went to see a surgeon and he was pretty confident about what he could do. Um, he explained about the procedure that would take place. I went in, had my operation, woke up. I was, first thing I asked apparently was, you know, when can I go home? And exactly 24 hours later, I was back home, sitting having coffee with my husband in the sitting room. had walked out of Dr. Malik's clinic and said to Kate, I just can't cope with this. I can't stand the pain. And Kate then put me in touch with a psychologist. I had quite a few sessions with the clinical psychologist and it was her who first told me that I had a quite deep depression and she would get in touch with my GP and I would be on antidepressants and that's exactly what happened. I still talk to the psychologist yet um, and she helps me from month to month cope with the disease that I've got that I just get on and live with. That, that's enough orange. I've had eight radioactive iodine treatments, which are much better now because the first one I had to come off the thyroxine. Now I have thyrogen injections, which works so much better. I can go into the room on my own. I feel much better, um, cope with life better, just get on with my hobbies and reading while I'm in the room. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds quite nice. How many colours you going to have? Nice. Now seeing the team every three months, keeping a check on me, suggested that I go in for more radioactive iodine, which I do, um, get that done. And a week later, I have my body scan. And then at the clinic, it's put to me that, although the deposits have taken up little bits in my body, in my head, which is the main bit, there's been no uptake at all. 
You immediately see, what can we do next? Is there something else we can do? Dr. Malik put to me straight away that there is another tablet. This might be the window, the opportunity to offer these fairly new drugs that have been brought out, uh, TKIs, which would, wouldn't be a cure, um, but would, could possibly just hold things at bay um, to stop the disease progressing. Dr. Malik explained all the side effects, took me through it in great detail. Before I left the clinic that day, he gave me a package to read with lots of information in, all the side effects of the treatment, how the tablets would be taken. Um, I had to go away and sit and read that. Got myself all prepared for when I went back to clinic next time. And we sat and discussed it again, and I said I was prepared for it. I looked at the side effects and it wasn't a great concern. I wasn't all that bothered about, you know, um, some of the side effects that were mentioned because it was a treatment for my cancer. This was a bit of a relief to me because being told that the radioiodine hadn't worked in my head anymore, to know that there was another drug available to me Obviously, it was a great relief. When I picked the tablets up from the pharmacy at the hospital, um, I got the tablets and I thought, oh gosh, I can just get on with my life and enjoy my family, spend a bit more time with Anna, and this was what I needed. I started the tablets slowly, gradually increasing. At the beginning, I had uh, diarrhea for the first day. Right, I'll just take one tablet the next day then, which I did. I had no more symptoms at all. Two and a half weeks into it where I felt my skin was dry and quite red and blotchy and then my scalp started to get a bit itchy and stingy and that was it. I thought right if this is it, this is going good. Um, I went back to the clinic talked to Kate and Dr. Peros about um, my skin reaction and I was offered a prescription but that would help my skin straight away given some advice on my scalp so that was good it's really it's quite good now although you can feel a little bit of dryness um, the harshness has gone off it the first few weeks, my GP surgery wanted to see me every week. Uh, I was having blood pressure taken and blood done. Seven weeks in, um, I went into my doctor's surgery, had my bloods taken. They immediately got back in touch with me to go back in and have more bloods taken, um, which I did. And the same day, my doctor phoned me to say, now your white blood cells are very low. Would I get in touch with your cancer team or would you like to do it? So knowing the number and knowing I can get in touch with them straight away myself at any time, I just phoned my uh, nurse um, and give her all the details. And they got in touch with my doctor's surgery, um, faxed the results through to them and Dr. Malik looked at them and has now suggested that I just take uh, probably a two week break from the tablets just to give my system a rest and give the white blood cells a chance to build up again. It's been a very positive experience for me. It's given me hope for the future. Um, I can look further ahead. Eight years ago, I was unlucky enough to be diagnosed with cancer. Now, today, after given all the help and support and treatments, I know that I've got to enjoy my family life and look forward to whatever comes in the future.